Hey everybody, uh, today I'm going to give you some pointers on the caregiver and nanny visa applications for the H-2B. One of the things that typically happens to me around March or April is that I get a lot of emails and inquiries from people that have notices of deficiency and denials in the H-2B process. And I received a few this year uh, for nannies, which I put in the same category as caregivers. And so I wanted to provide some tips on what that process um, is like and why it's it's qualitatively different from other H-2B applications. I'll see you after the break. Hey all, so uh, my name is Damien DeNoble. I'm an attorney at Frontier Tech Law. Uh, I've been doing this H2B thing for a minute, and one of the things where I really uh, crack the nut uh, is cracking the nut, by the way, is an old-timey Midwest term, term meaning solve the puzzle. Now it's a uh, it's a weird uh, it's a weird term, cracking the nut, uh, because cracking the nut is very brute force intensive. There's not too much thinking involved there. And yet we mean, uh, we make it mean solving a puzzle, which is interesting. But anyway, cracking the nut on, on the H2B process for nannies and caregivers. Here's, here's the secret. And I, I've talked about this in a prior video, which you can see here uh, on a nannies. Um, uh, how do you define a temporary need for a caregiver of a nanny is, is the key question for an H2B, which rests on the temporary need inquiry. So let's think through that. What makes the Department of Labor and the USCIS confident that an application for a temporary caregiver or nanny in the H-2B program is truly, again, temporary and not permanent? Well, let's, let's think about life stages. Uh, when somebody needs a nanny for their children, those children typically are going to be on the younger side, infants, toddlers, preschool age. And so uh, when we need nannies, I myself have two children, um, we need nannies uh, because maybe both parents are working or one of the parents who isn't working would like to get back to work, but there, there's nowhere to send the kids. There's, there's uh, either no pre-K available, all pre-Ks are full, uh, there's no school available, right? Because the children are old enough yet. And so a temporary situation arises where a nanny is needed to cover that temporary period from when children are able to go to school and, you know, when they're dependent on, on a caregiver. So then the question becomes, so, so why is this temporary worker needed if we assume that, you know, USCIS and DOL already believe it's temporary and the why can be very different. There can be a lot of different reasons for the why. Um, typically somebody needing to go back to work is, is, is a big reason. Okay, but it, that doesn't have to be it. Other reasons that something might be temporary in nature. Maybe there's a transition period in a family. Uh, a lot of working, moms had to stop going to work because of COVID to take care of children. I'm not saying dads didn't do it. I sure did. Uh, you know, my wife is a, is, a, is a very, very busy medical worker, so I have more flexibility. Uh, but by and large, it was, it was, it was mothers who, who came back home. And so maybe now they need to, person needs to go back to work. And even though their children are older, that's impossible without having a nanny or a caregiver. And that can become the temporary need argument saying, you know, I need a year to try and get back into the workforce because finding a job is a full time job of itself. So uh, these are the sorts of arguments that need to be made to show that there's a temporary need. Um, is it easy to do this? It's not, it's not easy. It's, it's not like you just put in a paragraph with an application. You really have to convince the officers anything you say you really wanna back up with evidence anything that you claim, you really want to claim well, you, you wanna create a detailed explanation. And that's how you can get to the nanny. On the caregiver side, again, if we're thinking about life stages, instead of there being young children, you typically have elderly people or, or people who are in convalescence that need care. And the temporary nature could temporary nature of this could be that somebody is maybe in hospice care or somebody doesn't have a definite amount of time left, they're deteriorating quickly. And so it's temporary in the sense that death is around the corner, right? For lack of a better phrase. And then, and then the other bit is 
somebody might need to transition to get into a job even though they were a primary caregiver and they need somebody else to step into that caregiver role. So that's a way to show temporariness, okay? All of these positions, uh, when we're looking at nannies and caregivers, when we're looking to prove a temporary need, it's not a seasonal need, it's not a peak load need, it's not an intermittent need. All of this is going to go under the one-time category, which is that fourth category that you can apply for under the H-2B. And what's interesting about that one-time category is that it's not season dependent. So you can apply an April 1st or October 1st cycle. In fact, you can apply through both. And you know, if you're unsuccessful in one, you can try to transfer that application to the other because they're not season dependent. And so that one-time need, in other words, is continuous uh, for as long as you're, you're claiming that it's there. And so a lot of times when we're working with Indian caregiver visas, you know, we'll, we'll pick the first available cycle, try to get approved in that. And even if we don't make the lottery or, or get cut off, we'll withdraw that application once it's fully certified, reapply in the new cycle and hope to do better in the lottery. Okay, now, can you do this for like three years? Probably not, because then, then you have the problem of saying, hey, I've been applying for three years and then DOL says, well, you still have the need that you had three years ago. We thought it was temporary. So there are some limits on this, but that is not a situation I've had to, you know, uh, incur yet personally, and, uh, but it's just one that can happen. So that's, that's the kind of nanny and caregiver temporary need process. And this idea that you have to find the hook right? And then make sure that you're applying under that one-time category. Do we do this? We do. We're happy to help with this. Um, this uh, is something you should give us a call about. And if you have any questions, you know, leave them here and I'm happy to answer them. All right, take care.